Word 2000 has many useful automated tools that allow you to reduce errors and typing time while you work. The two commonly used ones are AutoCorrect and AutoText. AutoCorrect is used to correct common typing errors even as you type. For instance, a common mistake for AND is ADN. And for PEACE, one tends to write P-E-I-C-E. -E. AutoCorrect automatically checks and corrects such spelling errors. Word allows you to define your own autocorrect entries. You can define automatic corrections for your own common mistakes. Or define replacements for abbreviations with their full forms. Example, WRT through autocorrect becomes with respect to. To use autocorrect, you need to select tools. Select autocorrect to open the autocorrect dialog box. There are four checkbox options that perform autocorrect on the general misspelt words. Correct to initial capitals. Automatically corrects double uppercase letters that commonly occur when typing fast. Capitalize first letter of sentences. Automatically converts the first letter of a sentence into uppercase. Capitalize names of days. Automatically changes the first letter of the days of the week into uppercase. Correct accidental use of a caps lock key. Automatically corrects the common mistake of beginning a paragraph with the caps lock key turned on. The fifth option, replace text as you type, enables user-defined errors, defined and replace, to be replaced with the correct spellings, defined in width. The dialog box also displays a list of autocorrect entries under the columns, replace and width, respectively. To add an entry, you need to type in replace and with text box entries. The replace text box is where you type in the incorrectly spelt word. The with text box is where you type in the correct spelling for the same word. Autocorrect uses the with entry to correct the misspelt word or abbreviated word. For example, here we have created a new entry where IS will be replaced with Indian subcontinent. Then you need to click on Add to add the autocorrect entry to the list. Once the options have been selected and entry is added, you click on OK or press Enter to enable the autocorrect options and close the dialog box. Let us now type in IS in the main document. The moment we press the space bar, IS automatically changes to Indian subcontinent. You can also use autocorrect to enter symbols. The commonly used symbols in textual documents are copyright, registered and trademark. You can define autocorrect entries for them such that C in brackets is replaced with copyright symbol. R in brackets is replaced with the registered symbol. TM in brackets is replaced with the trademark symbol. There may be times when you wish to use C or R as it is. You can reverse the autocorrect action by immediately pressing the backspace key or using undo. Word also allows you to customize the way autocorrect works on your system. This is available from the exceptions option of the autocorrect dialog box. Here you can define which first letter is not to capitalize or which first two initial letters not to correct, or which other corrections to ignore. Word 2000 has a new feature whereby autocorrect works in conjunction with the spell checker. This allows for autocorrect to correct wrongly spelt words with suggestions from the dictionary. This feature will work only if the autocorrect option for spell check is enabled and the check spelling as you type option is also enabled. To enable automatic spelling correction through autocorrect, you need to select tools. Select autocorrect to open the autocorrect dialog box. Mark the check box against automatically use suggestions from the spelling checker check box. Click on OK to confirm the selection and close the dialog box. To enable spell check as you type, you need to select tools, select options, click on the spelling and grammar tab. 
Mark the checkbox against check spelling as you type. Click on OK to confirm and close the options dialog box. The second automated tool to reduce typing time is the Autotext feature. It provides an easy way to store and retrieve formatted text, graphics, addresses, letter closings, memos, distribution lists, tables, logos, almost anything that you can create in Word. This list is created as a global glossary of autotext entries and can be used in the current or later documents. Every autotext entry has a name and the amount of such entries that can be stored is only limited by the storage space on your computer. To create an autotext entry, you need to select the text, table, graphic or any object that is to be made into an autotext entry. Select Insert Menu. Select Autotext. Select New. In the Create Autotext Entry dialog box, enter a short, descriptive name for the selected object. Click on the OK button to store the Autotext Entry. You could also invoke the Create Autotext Entry dialog box by pressing Alter plus F3 from the keyboard. To use the Autotext feature to insert an entry while typing, you need to Place the insertion point where you want the autotext entry to appear. Type the short, descriptive name assigned to it. Press F3 from the keyboard. The autotext entry gets inserted at the chosen place. If you forget the short names, you can also insert an autotext entry from the autotext menu by selecting Insert, selecting Autotext. From the list at the bottom of the submenu, Choosing the Autotext entry you want. If you use Autotext very frequently, it may be a good idea to have the Autotext toolbar enabled. To display the Autotext toolbar, you need to right-click on any word toolbar, select the Autotext option to enable the toolbar. To use the Autotext toolbar, you need to know what each button offers. This icon, when clicked, displays the autocorrect dialog box with the autotext tab in front. The second button can change depending on where the insertion point is placed. It will read all entries when the insertion point is positioned in the normal text area. When you click on the down arrow, it will display a list of commonly used autotext categories. Pointing to a category will open a submenu of the autotext entries in this category. If the insertion point is positioned within the header or footer text frames, the button changes to a header or footer button. When you click on the down arrow next to the button, you see a list of auto text entries that are related to the header or footer entries. The last button, New, gets enabled if some text or object is selected and allows you to create an auto text entry for the selection. If you click on it, the Create Autotext dialog box opens out. This is where you type in the short, descriptive name and click on OK. To remove an Autotext entry, you need to select Insert, Autotext. Select Autotext again from the submenu. Select the entry to be deleted from the displayed list. Click on the Delete button. Click on OK to close the Autotext dialog box. A relatively underutilized but very useful tool in Word is Mail Merge. Mail Merge allows you to quickly create personalized documents such as letters, catalogs, forms, labels, name tags to multiple recipients. It works with a main document file within which the standard repetitive matter is laid out along with variable data fields. It also uses a data source document file or database into which the actual data items are entered, example, name, designation, address, etc. These individual data items will be used against each corresponding field of the main document. The database can also be used later to print envelopes and labels. Word makes the task of mail merging very easy through the Mail Merge Helper dialog box. Let us see how this works by creating simple labels. 
You need to create the data file as well as define the specifications for the labels. To create the labels, you need to select Tools, select Mail Merge. This opens the Mail Merge Helper dialog box with word prompting you to create the main document first. Select the Create button to view the list of main document types that can be created. Select Mailing Labels. Word prompts you again about whether you wish to use the current open document called Active Window as the main document or use a new main document. Select Active Window. This is when the Get Data button gets enabled. You can click on the Get Data button to see a list of the sources from where data can be got. Select Open Data Source. The data file can be any file that has a database format or Excel format wherein each individual data item is stored separately in a field or cell. To view all the files you need to select all files in the Files of Type drop down list. Select the file you wish to use. Then click on the Open button. In the case of an Excel spreadsheet, you may see this additional display confirming the spreadsheet range, where you simply click on OK. Word then prompts you to complete your main document with this display. Click on Set up main document. This opens the Label Options dialog box, wherein you need to define all the specifications about the label. Choose the printer you will be using from this area. Now you click on the down arrow next to Label Products to view all the categories of label. Avery is a USA standard. Based on the selected standard, the product number display changes to the variety of labels available within the standard. You can scroll through the list of product numbers. As you click on a product number, the relevant size information is displayed in the Label Information window. Select the label product number that will suit your requirement. And then click on OK to confirm and close the dialog box. This leads directly into the Create Labels dialog box. This is where you define the fields you require from the database to create the labels. Then you click on the Insert Merge Field button. You see a drop down list of all the field names in the data source you have chosen. Every time you wish to insert a merge field, you need to click the Insert Merge Field button. So, if you wish to have the first line of the label looking like this, Anita Ward, you need to define the first line as First Name, Last Name. For the first line, select First Name and press the space bar once to insert a blank space. Next, click on the Insert Merge Field button and select Last Name. Once the line is complete, press Enter to start the next line. This is the procedure to be employed to complete the remaining lines. Remember that the space bar is used to separate two words in a line. And Enter lets you start a new line. Once the label is fully defined, click on OK to confirm and close the dialog box. Since both the main document and data source documents are set up, the third button of the Mail Merge Helper dialog box gets enabled. Now you click on Merge to lead into the Merge dialog box. Word merges the two documents into a third document format that can be viewed and saved or directly sent to the printer. In the Merge to section, choose New Document. Also, select the radio button against Don't Print Blank Lines When Data Fields Are Empty so that if a data record does not have any data in a field selected for the labels, it will bring up the next line instead of inserting a blank line. Then click on Merge. Word merges the two files and creates a new document with the data laid out in the label format. Mail Merge can also be used to set up form letters that have the same format but need to be sent to many people. The sample letter here is an invitation to attend the opening ceremony of the new Domino's Pizza outlet in the city. We will use this as our main letter and set up Mail Merge to send these letters to a contacts list. To perform Mail Merge for this form letter, you need to select Tools, 
Select Mail Merge to open the Mail Merge Helper. Under Main Document, select Create. From the drop-down list, select Form Letters. Then select Active Window to define that the currently open invitation is to be used for the main document. Back in the Mail Merge Helper, you now select Get Data to select the data source you wish to use. The Create Data Source option helps you to create a new database file. We assume that the data file already exists, so you select Open Data Source. From the Open Data Source dialog box, select the word file Contacts. Then click on the Open button. The Mail Merge Helper now prompts us to complete the main document. Since the data source is finalized, you now need to get back to the main document to complete it with the merge field names at the appropriate places. So you need to click on the Edit Main Document button. This returns you to the invitation you first started with, along with the Mail Merge toolbar at the top. Let us assume that you wish to make the first line read to first name, last name. To set up the main document, you need to position the insertion point after the word to. Press the space bar once to insert a blank space. Click on the Insert Merge Field button. Select First Name. Press the space bar again. Click on the Insert Merge Field button. Select Last Name. Type in a comma. Once all the fields to be merged are inserted, you need to click on the Merge to New Document icon on the Mail Merge toolbar. The new merged document is now visible with many copies of the invitation divided by section breaks. Each invitation bears a different person's name in the order it exists in the contact list database. This should be saved if you wish to use it again. You can also print this the same way you would print any Word document. It is obvious from this example that you will require to print envelopes to mail these invitations in, complete with name and address. Printing envelopes is also possible through the Mail Merge Helper dialog box. While the Mail Merge feature is very precise and detailed, Word provides another automated method to quickly print one addressed envelope and letter. This is not a Mail Merge process, but an offshoot which has less perfection in its automatic facility. To use this informal printing an envelope and letter method, you need to enter the name at the top of the letter followed by the complete address. Complete the letter in whatever fashion you want. Highlight the name and address portion at the top of the letter. Select Tools menu. Select Envelopes and Labels. In the Envelopes and Labels dialog box, select the Envelopes tab if required. The highlighted name and address is displayed in the Delivery Address text box. You can change the complete address or edit the current one or leave it as it is if it is correct. You can type in a return address in the return address text box. If no return address is to be used, mark the checkbox against omit. Click on the options button to open the envelopes options dialog box. Click on the down arrow next to envelope size and select the one you want. Click on OK to return to the envelopes and labels dialog box. Here you can click on print to print only the envelope. Or click on Add to Document if you wish to print the envelope along with the document. You can also define a default return address for all your envelopes so that you do not have to type it in every time. To define a default return address, you need to select Tools, Options, select the User Information tab, type in the name, initials. Type in the return address in the mailing address text box. Click on OK. The address defined will now be used as the default return address. The concept of OLE or object linking and embedding involves the sharing of objects or data. Across applications, OLE will work only if the two concerned applications individually support OLE. It has been very well exploited by software applications that support this feature. Example, a document created in Excel or Access 
can be embedded or linked into a Word document. An object in OLE is any type of data such as clip arts, charts, pictures, sounds, video clips, tables, etc. The name, as it suggests, does not imply that an object is embedded and linked. You can either embed an object or link it. The considerations that make you decide for one over the other, either linking or embedding, can be disk space, dynamic updation. When you embed an object into a Word document, you paste a copy of the object into the Word document. The source from where the object was taken has the original object and a copy of it is pasted into the destination file such that it becomes a part of the destination file. The two copies of the embedded object, original and embedded, are independent of each other and any changes to either will not affect the other. When you link an object, you do not make a copy but merely establish a link to the source location from where the object is being referenced. Since there is no actual second copy of the object, any changes to the source object will automatically get updated in the linked version. Also, since it is only a link and not a copy, the size of the file into which the object is linked does not increase since it is not actually a part of it. So when disk space and dynamic updation are vital issues, you should opt for linking versus embedding. To embed an object, you need to select the object in its source application, select edit menu, select copy, switch to the file into which you wish to insert the object, place the insertion point where the object is to be placed, select edit, select paste. This pastes a copy of the selected object in its current state. It will not get updated if the source is changed. To link an object, you need to select the object in its source application, select the edit menu, select copy, switch to the file into which you wish to insert the object, place the insertion point where the object is to be placed, select edit. Select Paste Special. From the dialog box, select the radio button against Paste Link. Click on OK. The link is now established between the two files. The new Paste option used here for linking was the Edit Paste Special command. This command lets you insert the clipboard contents as an OLE object into another location in the same document or other documents. The Paste Special dialog box not only lets you choose between embedding or linking, it also lets you choose the format in which the object is to be pasted. This is available in the As Display window list. You can choose the format and the type of pasting and click OK to link or embed. You can also embed an object by the drag and drop method. For this, both files need to be visible at the same time. This is possible by tiling them in such a way that they both occupy half the screen. Let us embed an Excel chart into a Word document by dragging it. You need to open the Excel file. Open the Word file. Right click the taskbar over the two applications buttons. From the pop-up menu select tile horizontally. The two applications get tiled. You will notice that only one application's title bar is highlighted and the insertion point is in it. This is the active application. Make the Excel file the active application. Click once on the chart. Hold down the control key on the keyboard. Click on the mouse button over the chart and drag it across the borders of the applications into the Word window. Position the insertion point, indicated by a dotted line, in the desired place. Release the mouse button. Release the control key. As you can see, the chart in Excel is embedded into the Word document. You can use the same technique to embed an object from Windows Explorer into Word. You need to tile the Explorer and Word windows before you start to drag the object. You can also embed pictures into a Word document. To embed a picture, you need to place the insertion point where the picture is to be placed. Select Insert Menu. Select Picture. 
select from file. The insert picture dialog box opens out, which looks in many ways like the open dialog box. You are already familiar with the procedure to locate the file with the look in and places bar areas. If you wish to see other formats of picture files, then select the desired format from the files of type drop down list. You can see a view of the picture file if you are not sure of the contents by selecting preview from the view icon options. Once the picture file is selected, you click on insert or press enter to embed the picture. The picture file gets embedded.